this is the first time we're going through something like this. However, because the Ebola situation happened quite close to us, there were a lot of processes that were put in place in preparation in just in case Ebola did enter our borders, but it never did. However, once we had the coronavirus enter, it meant that there was sort of a, a playbook that had already been prepared, which we could then fall back on and um, implement that with whatever minor adjustments were needed to meet the situation on needs. The teaching aspect is where the biggest shift has been because uh, the students have all been asked to um, stay home. The um, rest of the work has been sort of migrated as much as possible to do the things that can be done remotely. In the short term, I think it's going to be bad because there'll be a lot of uh, slow down output. Um, but long term wise, I think it'll have a positive impact. And the reason for this being the uh, governments uh, sort of waking up to the fact that maybe we should fund the scientific community a bit more because there's all the neurological aspects of this virus and there's a lot that the neuroscience community here in Ghana can contribute to it. A lot more collaborations now are sort of being born out of this. But when your freedom has been reduced because of these lockdowns and all these restrictions, you start thinking about how you can compensate for it. And this has really churned out certain collaborations that I hope will last beyond um, the immediate pandemic. Um, in 2021, we are having um, the Society of Neuroscientists in Africa conference uh, happening in, in Ghana. So it's be very interesting uh, since the theme of that was also infectious diseases. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see between now and 2021, the body of work that's going to come out that was just spurned uh, by this pandemic.